In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we might get some collision detection going in our game. If you remember in the last tutorial, we had our hero who was able to traverse from room to room, but the problem was is that the character could walk over top of trees and mountains and things that the character should not have been able to walk over. So in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we might implement a very simple collision detection system. Now, if you recall, we can go back over here to game object. We have a collides with method that's already in place, but we're actually going to override this because this is more circular based and what we're doing involves rectangles. So we're going to redefine that here in just a minute. So looking at tile again, we have to make a couple of changes. And I'll start here at the very top. We'll keep those attributes that you see there. And I'll say this is the new stuff. And the first thing that we're going to do is to define a hitbox. So let's say public vector for hitbox. And this is going to represent the area of collision. And we'll talk about that again in just a second. We're also going to create a couple of static variables, public, static, int. And the first one we'll call is not passable. And this means that the tile is not passable. This might be something that's very large, like mountain or a tree or something that clearly does not need to be traversed. Okay, the other one that we're going to create is static int, and we'll call this one partially passable. Partially, hard to spell there, passable. And we'll set this to be 1, and we'll create one more static int completely passable. And I'll give you a couple of examples of these. A partially passable icon might be something like a, let's say a tree, uh, or potentially some rocks, and the reason that they're partially passable is going to be obvious when we start to try to traverse these different areas, but you need to allow the hero to go up to them and actually partly into those tiles, and that'll make sense as we start to walk around. Okay, now that we have those, we actually need to store whether or not this is passable or not, so public, let's say int passable, and what's going to happen here is passable is going to be assigned one of these three different states right here, either not passable, partially passable, or completely passable. Okay, so those look good so far. Now what we're going to do is come down here and create a new method to determine whether or not this tile is going to be passable. So I'll say public void set passable. Okay, and we'll call this method actually from the constructor because we need to make sure that that's in place. So I'll say set passable. Okay, now the logic is going to be that by default everything is not going to be passable. So I'll start it out to just say passable gets not passable. And now you're starting to see why we define these things up there because I don't want to have to remember is it zero or one or two. I can use these pseudo constants here and it's much easier to read. Okay? Also what I'll do is I'm going to say that the hitbox initially because it's not passable uh, by default is that the hitbox is going to be the position.x of the tile, pause.y of the tile, and again this is the upper left hand coordinate of the hitbox, and so the lower right hand coordinate is going to be pause.x plus the sprite.width, let's try that again, sprite.width, let's figure out why it's not liking sprite.width, Okay, and we'll do the same thing here, pause.y plus sprite.height. Does some screwy things here sometimes. Okay, but we're going to say that that looks good enough for now, and actually I'm going to divide this by 2, because I don't want the entire region of this tile to be completely unpassable. We should still be able to walk up to a rock, let's say, and to have our character partially overlap that tile. So a not passable tile is not passable with its width, but it is part of its height. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to hard code in some values of tiles that are considered to be either partially passable or totally passable. So what I'll say is the totally passable tiles, totally passable. You can see that's just an array of ints here. Uh, and I'm going to set it up to be this kind of static initialization, 2, 8, 14, and I'm having to copy these off of a sheet of paper right now, so my apologies. 22, 24, 28, uh, 30, 34, 58, 64, 70, and 88. Okay? So if you go and you look in the sprite sheet, you'll see that those sprites, those icons, are actually totally passable kinds of things like uh, sand or some other kind of icon like that. Okay, we're going to do a very similar kind of thing here, int partially passable. 
and we'll statically initialize this. Now there's only a couple of things here that are partially passable. I think there's a tree and uh, some other form of rock or something like that, that from what I remember. Okay, so now what we'll do is we're going to update the passability of this tile because right now by default the first thing that happens is the tile is not passable. So what I'll do is I'll come down here and check to see if we're in a situation that we might need to update that passable attribute. So watch how I do this. I'll say for int i get zero, so long as i is less than the partially passable dot length i plus plus. Okay, so we're going to loop through that partially passable array, and we'll say if the tile type of this tile is equal to the partially passable array element that we're looking at, then we have a match, then what we're going to do is to say that the passability of this tile gets partially passable. Okay, so we've basically changed the passable attribute. Also, we need to update that hitbox. So what I'm going to say is that the hitbox is going to actually get smaller than what it was. I'll say it gets a new vector for passing it pause.x plus sprite.width. Oh, we're getting that again. Sprite.width, um, but we're going to multiply it by 0 0.25, in other words, a quarter of that. And essentially, we've slid over the hitbox just a little bit to the right. And the reason that we want to do that is to give a little bit of room for error. Okay, so that's the x. The y would be pause.y plus, and we'll do the same thing, sprite.width times 0 0.25. And again, these are squares, so we don't have to worry about width versus height. I'll change this back. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is to update the lower right side. So that's going to be pause.x plus sprite.width times 0.75 f. And we'll do the same thing, pause.y plus sprite.height. It doesn't really matter if we use width or height in this case because they are square. Okay, so I'll go back and change these to lowercase s. Okay, so now that we've updated the hitbox, it's now time to determine if something is completely passable. And so we'll do a similar kind of thing. I'll say for int i get 0, so long as i is less than the totally passable array dot length i plus plus same kind of code here if tile type is equal to totally passable of i then what we'll do is to say that this is totally passable passable gets completely passable okay notice that we don't have to have a hitbox in this case because if it's completely passable we don't need to do any kind of collision detection Okay, the other situation was there's a row at the bottom of the overworld tile sheet that starting at number 126. So watch what I'm going to say. If the tile type is greater than or equal to 126, then all of those are completely passable. I'll go ahead and mark it to say passable gets completely passable. So in general, what we're doing here is to say that by default, everything is not passable and then we relieve the stress of the collision detection, so to speak, as we go through this, changing it from not passable to either partially passable or completely passable. Okay, now it looks like we have an error up here on line 41. Just forgot my parentheses, and perhaps that's what was causing the problems before. Okay, so now that we have the set passable, we're going to use that down here in our collides with, and we're going to override that. So public override bool collides with and notice that it takes in a game object called other so let's go ahead and put that in there game object other okay um, and by default it tries to call the base but we're not going to do that so what we'll say is that if this tile is passable completely passable then we know that we don't have a collision so we're going to return false okay Otherwise, what we need to do is to check the hitbox. So if this.hitbox.z is less than other.pause.x, then we can return false. Now let's walk through this logic real quick. It's identical to what you saw in previous tutorials in 1301, but basically if the lower right-hand x-coordinate of this tile is less than the other thing that we're checking's x position, then we know that there's no way that we could have a collision. Okay, so we're going to use that same kind of logic here. Uh, we'll do the same thing. If this dot hitbox 
hitbox.x is greater than the other.pause.x plus the width of that, which is other.sprite.width. Then we know that's a similar situation. Then we have to return false. Okay? We'll keep going. If this.hitbox.w is less than other.pause.y, and again, this is the lower right-hand coordinate. Remember, W maps to the Y of the lower right-hand coordinate. And so what we'll say is return false. And then finally, what we'll do is to say if this.hitbox.y is greater than other pause.y, and you'll see the pattern here, plus other.sprite.height, then we know a similar kind of thing that we're going to return false. And I'll tab that over. Now, we have a whole bunch of return falses here. If we've made it at this point, then we know that we have a collision, so we're going to return true. Okay? So all of that code essentially says whether or not a tile is passable, and therefore we can determine if it is colliding with another object. So we're done now with tile, unless there are compile errors. All right, now in looking at classroom here, we're going to keep almost all of this code. In fact, we'll keep all of this code, uh, but we're going to add a little bit more. I'm going to create a new function, public bool collides with, Ooh, collides with, not with. Okay, and it's going to take in a game object that we'll call other. And the basic idea is that we're looking to see if this other thing that's coming in is going to collide with anything that's in our tile set. So I need this loop, just like we have up here inside of load room. I'll say for int y get zero, so long as y is less than 10, y plus plus. And we'll stub in the structure here. For int x, here we go, get zero, so long as x is less than 16, x plus plus. And then the logic for this is relatively straightforward. All we have to do is ask each tile whether or not they collide with this game object. So watch how we do that. I can say if terrain of y comma x dot collides with, aha, that's there because if you go back and you look at tile, we just wrote that method right here. So we'll come back to room. Okay, so what we're saying here is if the terrain collides with the other object, then what we'll do is to return true. So essentially what we're saying is that as we loop through each tile, if this other object, which is actually just the hero, collides with any part of the terrain, we're going to return true. Otherwise, what we'll do is just return false. Okay, so that's it for the room class. Now, the last thing that we need to do is to jump over here to hero. And in looking at this, we don't have a whole lot of changes to do. Uh, most of the changes are going to be down here in update. Now, if you recall from the last tutorial, we had this vector called possible update. And actually, I believe that needs to be a vector 3, not a vector 2. Let's come back down here. So what we're saying is that the possible update is going to start out at 0. We're going to go ahead and move the character and assume that it goes through. And if not, if we have a collision, we're going to undo that operation. So watch what we say here. Instead of using the position directly, we're going to use this possible update. So what I'll do is change this to possible update. Actually, I will copy this. Okay, and you can see that we're decrementing now directly into possible update. We'll do the same thing instead of pause here. We'll remove that and put in possible update. Same thing here and same thing here. Okay, so now we know that we have a possible update. The last thing that we would want to do is to go ahead and add that into it. We'll say pause plus equals possible update. And then we get into the collision detection. So watch how simple this is now that we've set everything up. I could say if main game dot current room, which is the current room that we have loaded, collides with this. And remember we said that we were going to pass the character, and this is how we do it. When I say this from within the character, that goes into the rooms collides with method. And you can see the hero is going to come in here, and then we're going to check the hero against every tile. So let's come back over here. If we do see that there's a collision, the only thing that we have to do is to undo the operation. So we can say pause minus equals the possible update. So here comes the moment of truth. Let's see if it compiles. And it looks like we have an error right here. I think that should be a capital W, and this should be a capital W as well. And let's try it again. 
and you can see we have our character here on the screen and as I move around notice that the character stopped I'm trying to go up here into this region and this demonstrates what we were talking about we don't want this green mountain tile that you see here that he's hitting against to stop him in his tracks we actually want a little bit of overlap between the hero and that mountain piece okay now there are some flaws I should be able to go up a little bit here but you can see the corners don't work very well but I can come up here and I can come over here to these mountain pieces and I cannot walk into them but I can do this action right here I can go part way through them and it's also really tough for me to go up in between these so I should probably have marked these as partially passable not completely impassable or not passable okay same thing over here and I should be able to come over here and I think there's some trees yeah some trees and this shows you what partially passable looks like so you can see I have similar kind of behavior I can come up just a little bit and I can go into the tree just a little bit from each side okay so you can imagine that we have these little tiny hit boxes that are inside each of these tiles so that's it for now hopefully you see the big picture about how we're piecing all of this stuff together and more importantly how we're building it iteratively adding in functionality as we go